Welcome to another patho video. Today let's talk about Parkinson's disease, including causes, epidemiology, diagnosis, and treatment. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a common neurodegenerative disease, second only to Alzheimer's disease. It currently affects more than 1 million Americans and more than 4 million globally. Men are affected more than women, at a ratio of about 3 to 2. It comes about with degeneration of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra of the midbrain. These neurons are important in regulating movement. It is believed that both the environment and genetics are contributing factors for disease development. In fact, many neurologists tell their Parkinson's patients that genetics slows the gun and the environment pulls the trigger. 20% of patients have a family history of the disease and mutations in genes that code for alpha-synuclein in the genes DJ1, PINK1, PARKIN, and LRRK2 have been tied to development of PD. Environmental factors, such as exposure to certain herbicides and pesticides, increases the risk for PD. A meta-analysis study published in the Journal of Neurology found that the exposure to the herbicide Paraquat was associated with a two-fold increase in the risk for the development of Parkinson's disease. The toxin MPTP from contaminated meparidine or heroin is known to cause PD. MPTP stands for methylphenyl tetrahydropyridine. MPTP acts like a Nike missile. to selectively destroy dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra. A history of head injuries also increases the risk for PD. So boxers and football players may have an increased risk. Basal nuclei or ganglia located in the midbrain are important components of neural circuits involved in planning, organizing, and coordinating motor movements. The basal nuclei consists of the striatum, and the substantia nigra. The substantia nigra literally means black substance and consists of dopamine producing dopaminergic neurons. This dopamine has an inhibitory effect in the circuits as they project onto the striatum. The striatum is composed of several nuclei including the caudate and putamen and consists mainly of cholinergic neurons that produce acetylcholine which acts as an excitatory neurotransmitter in these motor circuits to instigate movement. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease begin to occur when approximately 80% of the dopaminergic neurons of the substantia nigra die, causing an imbalance between the excitatory acetylcholine and the inhibitory dopamine. Diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is done mainly by directly observing patient symptoms. Akinesia refers to the loss of the ability to move muscles voluntarily, which leads to loss of facial expressions, described as mask-like facial expressions. Bradykinesia is a slowness of movement. Rigidity is demonstrated by a resistance to passive movement. During physical exam, as the doctor attempts to move the patient's elbow joint through its range of motion, a ratchet-like start and stop movement is elicited. This is known as cogwheel rigidity. The most common symptom is resting tremor, or pill rolling, and is characterized by forefinger rubbing against the thumb and by shakiness of the hands while at rest. The central triad of symptoms observed in PD is resting tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia. Also, PD patients experience postural instability, which is unsteadiness that increases the risk of falls, whether standing or sitting. The acronym TRAP may be used to remember the classical symptoms of resting tremor, rigidity, akinesia, and postural instability. But please also remember bradykinesia. With healthy individuals, dopamine and acetylcholine in the basal nuclei are in normal balance. With Parkinson's disease, dopaminergic neurons die, bringing about an imbalance between the two neurotransmitters. It makes sense that the meds used in Parkinson's disease, 
either bring dopamine levels up or act to decrease levels of acetylcholine to help restore the normal balance. Unfortunately, none of the meds available slow the progression of the disease. They only slow progression of symptoms. It is important to well educate the patient and family members concerning the disease. In later stages, patients will need physical, speech, and occupational therapy. The importance of exercise in the treatment of PD cannot be overemphasized. Experts agree that exercise is just as important as medication. Using both together has the best outcome to improve symptoms and mobility. L-DOPA or levodopa has been the cornerstone for Parkinson's disease med therapy. L-DOPA is a precursor necessary for dopamine production by dopaminergic neurons in the brain. Phenylalanine is a precursor for the production of L-DOPA. Note the similarity in the structure of these three molecules. Remember that L-DOPA is a precursor for the production of dopamine. L-DOPA is able to cross the blood-brain barrier, utilizing a special amino acid transporter that is also used by phenylalanine. Dopamine itself is unable to use this transporter and is therefore unable to cross the blood-brain barrier. There are two main enzymes that break down L-DOPA in the periphery. The first is called DOPA decarboxylase. DOPA decarboxylase removes a carboxyl group from L-DOPA, turning it into dopamine. This is not a favorable reaction in the periphery because when L-DOPA is converted into dopamine in the periphery, this decreases the amount of L-DOPA that is available to cross the blood-brain barrier. Dopamine itself is unable to cross the blood-brain barrier. It must be made in the brain. Also, dopamine in the periphery increases side effects like nausea, vomiting, and tachycardia. A decarboxylase inhibitor known as carbidopa will inhibit the actions of decarboxylase. Decarboxylase inhibitors are given with L-DOPA to prevent the breakdown of L-DOPA into dopamine in the periphery. This decreases dopamine in the periphery to limit dopamine-caused nausea, vomiting, and tachycardia. Since L-DOPA is not being broken down, more L-DOPA is allowed to cross into the brain. L-DOPA can also be broken down in the periphery into metabolites by the enzyme COMT. COMT stands for catechol omethyltransferase. The meds tolcapone and atacapone can be given to prevent this breakdown. Consequently, increasing the amount of L-DOPA available to cross the blood-brain barrier. After L-DOPA reaches the brain, it is converted into dopamine by decarboxylase in dopaminergic neurons. It is important at this point to keep the dopamine in the brain at high levels and prevent its breakdown. So COMT in the brain can be inhibited by tolcapone. Monoamine oxidase, also known as MAOB, is located in the brain and breaks down dopamine. It can be inhibited by selegiline and resagiline to also prevent the breakdown of dopamine in the brain. The point is, we want to prevent L-DOPA from breaking down in the periphery, and we want to prevent dopamine from being broken down in the brain. D2 receptor agonists like pramipexol and ropinirole can also be given to mimic the effects of dopamine as they bind to dopamine receptors. As a reminder, let's review the molecules that do not cross and the molecules that do cross the blood-brain barrier. The molecules that do not cross include dopamine, hence we need L-DOPA to enter the brain, and also these that don't cross include carbidopa, which will inhibit dopa decarboxylase in the periphery and not in the brain. And lastly, one that doesn't cross is entacapone, which is a COMT inhibitor that also 
as we said, does not cross. As far as molecules that do cross, that would include L-DOPA. This is favorable to cross because once L-DOPA is in the brain, it is converted to dopamine, which is desired because this will treat the low levels observed in Parkinson's disease. As discussed, as the disease progresses, dopaminergic neurons die and their ability to take up the administered L-DOPA and convert it into dopamine decreases. This brings about rapid swings in the brain's response to dopamine, and this is referred to as the on-off phenomenon. This phenomenon typically starts to occur after five years of treatment with L-DOPA. The disease symptoms are worse when dopamine levels are too low, and alternatively, the patient experiences dyskinesias when levels are too high. Dyskinesias most often observed with Parkinson med therapy include chorea and dystonias. Chorea movements are irregular involuntary movements of the facial muscles or limbs. Dystonias most often involve the head, neck, or feet and is abnormal muscle tone that impairs voluntary movements. Let's summarize some important points for MESD used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. The combination carbidopa levodopa is initiated when the patient is unable to function normally, usually in moderate or later stages. This medication should be taken one half hour before or one hour after eating a protein-containing meal to improve absorption. The amino acids in the protein meal will compete with L-DOPA for uptake into the brain, since both use the same transporter. The L-DOPA is converted into dopamine, which can cause adverse effects like nausea and vomiting, tachycardia, psychosis, and insomnia, so it should be administered several hours before going to bed. L-DOPA itself can interfere with negative feedback mechanisms in the brain that maintain blood pressure, so another side effect is orthostatic hypotension. Dopamine receptor agonists, like pramipexol, ropinarol, rotigotine, and bromocryptine are often the drugs of choice for younger patients and can be used with carbidopa levodopa to decrease the off periods. These are also used to treat the dyskinesia that occurs when the disease has progressed. Unfortunately, these may cause hallucinations. The newer dopamine receptor agonists are also used to treat restless leg syndrome. MAOB inhibitors like risagiline and selegiline may be used alone or with carbidopa levodopa in the early stages of Parkinson's disease. A transdermal form of selegiline is also available for the treatment of depression. COMT inhibitors like entacapone and tolcapone are sometimes added to carbidopa levodopa to reduce symptom fluctuations and to decrease the off periods. Their addition allows for a lower dose of carbidopa levodopa to be used. Tolcapone is rarely used due to liver issues. Intacapone may darken the urine or sweat. The dopamine modulator, amantadine, is often used during the early phases of the disease, but may also be used in moderate or advanced disease. This drug decreases muscle rigidity and tremor. Its mechanism of action includes increasing presynaptic release of dopamine and blocking reuptake of dopamine. Amantadine also has anticholinergic properties. The anticholinergics benztropine and trihexylphenidyl are used as adjuncts to treat tremors and muscle rigidity. They do not reduce bradykinesia. And it's important to remember the anticholinergic side effects they can cause, like tachycardia, confusion, dry mouth, urinary retention, and blurred vision. The antihistamine diphenhydramine is sometimes added on to treat tremors and muscle rigidity. Thanks for watching.